Alrighty, let's clap. Welcome to another Kitsa Cast, episode 8. I made it, you made it, we made it. Now I can look at you and I can smile and you won't even notice where was the missing tooth. Because I was at the dentist again and the lady who was working, like this is the first time, like they're changing depending on what they're doing, like they're changing the doctor. It's not like previously I was used to, you go to one dentist and that's the one dentist that does everything. Oh, cleaning the, off the dentist office, she does it or they do it. Like it's one person for everything. Now when I went here, I'm like, who are you? What are you doing? And every day it's someone different. But the last couple of times someone did this job, like it was such a shitty job. Like you could see, it, it looked like there's a bunch of food stuck there. Like it looked horrible. I'm like, well, I guess the dentist technology is not there yet. And my tooth is going to look like that for six months. And now we're at the freaking last stage. This is the last time we do this fake thing before we actually put the crown. And this lady who was working today was magnificent. Like I look at myself, they give you the mirror. You know, it's awkward. You're drooling, you're bloody and everything. It's like, here, look at yourself. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. But I look at the tooth and I'm like, wow, you, you made it look real. Like, what the fuck? So it turned out the older the person is and the more experience they have, they would do a better job. <laughs> Who would have think so company that employed a 12 year old last time? It was some freaking intern who was doing it last time. And she hasn't showered for the past 30 days. You know, every time I went there, she would be like, you know, I'll be like, how long is this? And she would be like, probably an hour. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, make it shorter. And then at the end of the procedure, she's like, how does it feel? Does it feel fine? Dude. Even if it was poking my tongue or whatever, I, it's great. It's great. Can I just go home so I have to shower instead of you for fuck's sake? So yeah, that was horrible. This lady today was magnificent and it turns like th this is going to be only for one week and then we're going to put the real thing and I'm finally freaking done with this tooth. So now the universe is just plotting, you know, like a fly on a summer day, just chilling on your window, just doing like, now we're going to break another one. It's going to be one more year. I'm wondering really what happens when an actual celebrity like breaks a tooth and they have to go to an event or whatever like what do they do they do, are they also like oh we have to wait for six months for the implant to to heal or do they have a special fucking implant healing technique if you're johnny depp or whatever anyway i started way going into the dentist thing but i'm glad that's fucking over you know what what's my worst nightmare now when i look at myself here in the recording thing I'm like what if i record like 60 minutes of this and then i have something on my tooth or i have a booger or whatever fuck i wouldn't re-record it 100 percent Either the podcast ends and it's like episode eight and fuck it, we're not recording anymore. Or I'm just going to blur out the part. Either my nose or my mouth is going to be like one of those Japanese videos that you're watching. I haven't heard about them, right? But it's only going to be one part blurred out. And the difference is going to be on like those videos. You're not going to skip to certain parts of this one, one because you don't like the guy who's on camera, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sick. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. And hopefully this is not going to happen because if I ever have a broken recording or whatever, see you, enjoy these eight episodes and just listen to them on repeat. Uh, topic of the day, a bunch of random shit. Tangents on tangents on tangents. Like we'll see if I'll even get to the listener question. There's this one question that should, I should devote an episode to, but I just have too much to talk about about my day. And I never get to this freaking question, but we'll see. Walk with me, don't forget. I'm mentioning this a little bit late. It's been like three, well, it's not that late, but... Three minutes into a podcast, if you want to lose weight, one of the best things you can do is right now in the middle of this shit, put on your headphones. I don't care if it's snowing, raining, whatever. Go for a walk. Thank me in the comments. Thank me one month later when you're fit as fuck and you have two abs. You're not going to get to a six pack, but you're going to get to two abs. Uh, send me video or comment questions. So I will ignore them for episode after episode after episode. And I'm not going to answer them. So far, no one has sent a video question. So thank you, faithful audience. Conferences I'm going to is the next Congress, Congress next. I'll never remember the name. I can't wait for this conference to be over so I don't have to repeat it again. 2nd of, of, of February, I'll be in Warsaw for this conference speaking. I'm opening the conference, so it's going to be fun. I haven't done this talk in a while, so it's going to be fun. Let's do the Benji review before we go into my day. My day was interesting, so can't wait to get to that part, but let's look at Benji and what's been going on. Sleep score. Let's start with the sleep. I my, my daughter was doing, she started her podcast. She's on episode three. Like it was five something a.m. And I told you about those little headphones, like an earplug slash headphones that I'm wearing in bed. So usually I wouldn't hear that. And the problem is they started falling out. So they have a bunch of gums and things that you can swap them. And actually they're going to not fall from your ears, but I'm too lazy to find a package. And I just struggle with them every night. So in the middle of the night, they'll just fall and they're somewhere in bed, bed and you cannot bother to find them because you need to turn on the light. <laughs> try turning on the light when your wife is there next to you. I like try turning on your flashlight. I'll be like, sorry, honey, move her aside. <laughs> I'm just trying to find my headphone. You're going to sleep in the snow outside. So I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to wear them. They fall in the middle of the night. And then 5 something a.m., my baby daughter starts the podcast about solid food. I don't know what she was babbling about, but it's 
I don't know whether to laugh or cry because it's like 5 a.m. and you're tired as fuck and she starts, I can't wait to have some Brussels sprouts. I don't know what is she saying, but it's hilarious. And I start laughing in the middle of the day. I turn to my wife. She's not laughing. And I'm like, honey, is it hilarious? She's like, oh, I got to do the thing now. And um, yeah, so I, I decided just to go downstairs because I'm like, there's like a couple more hours. And if I don't get enough sleep like these days, like, my days are usually a disaster, and if I wake up at 5, like, that's it, dude. I don't know how it can get more disastrous than what it is. So I just went downstairs, and I'm like, I'm going to sleep on the couch for a while just to get some sleep, and I couldn't fall asleep. It's the worst feeling when you're tired as fuck. This also happens to babies. This happens to the baby. You can see that she's very tired. You can see she's cranky. She's closing her eyes but trying to, you know, jolt herself awake. She's like, no, sleep is for the week. Like, I don't know if she listened to David Goggins in the womb or whatever happened, but she, this creature, like, you're tired, tired, you'd sleep. And then it happens to me, I'm like, oh, so we're the same like babies. Like, we have the same feelings, you know? So I was tired, but I couldn't fall asleep. And I started thinking about this freaking podcast. I started thinking, I can say this, I can say that. And I couldn't fall asleep, but I'm like, if you wake up at five, you're going to ruin your day. You're probably going to cancel a dentist appointment. You're going to look like a grandpa without a tooth for 90 years. So I, I, somehow I fell asleep, but I was in that half state. Like, I was half dreaming, half awake. I was thinking of podcast ideas. I was trying to tell Alexa, dude. Like, do you know that Alex actually, like, this was the most mind-blowing thing that my wife showed me. Like, me, the technology connoisseur, the guy who knows technology. My wife is like, do you know that you can whisper to Alexa and she can whisper back? And I'm like, oh, no. No, because I have, do you see that? I have that since 2017. The Google Home has stayed the same freaking product for a billion years. There's no changes. There's nothing new. But Amazon has been fucking kicking ass. So if you whisper to her, like, what's the time? She's going to reply. It's 5 a.m. Your daughter's having a podcast for some reason. It's hilarious. So I have no idea what was I saying. Ah, yeah. I wanted to set some reminders with Alexa, but I'm like, ah, oh, the, the Alexa reminder doesn't go anywhere. You know, with Siri, at least the reminder goes to the freaking reminders app. So I had a bunch of things that I wanted to talk about in the middle of my dream. Probably they're not worth it. If I was dreaming about them, like, fuck it. They're not important. So I wake up super groggy and super tired and like hor horribly feeling at 8.30 a.m. And I'm like, well, I have another dentist appointment at 12.45, so we can throw this day out of out of the way. Like, fuck it. What am, what am I going to do today? At least I'll do my walk, and I'm not doing anything else. So I wake up, and because I'm in the living room, I see this, like, TV in front of me not turned on, and just mechanically, I couldn't even lift myself up. Like, I take the remote, and I start watching freaking TV in the morning. Hashtag productivity. Hashtag hustling. Hashtag eat your heart out, David Goggins. That's how you start the day. They're like, you got to do a cold plunge. No, you got to start playing something on YouTube. So on YouTube, what I saw is Samsung announced the Galaxy S24. Dude, when are you going to reset that number? Like, are you going to go, oh, which one do you have? I have the Galaxy 79. Like, at some point, they're going to stop. I think around 60, when they get to 68, you know, and then they have the meeting about the next phone, probably they'll be like, we cannot do this, right? We got to reset. So they'll be like, introducing, instead of the Galaxy, it's going to be called Meteor 1 or, or whatever. Just change the freaking thing. And But I was impressed, you know? I'm an iPhone fanboy, like they got me into their ecosystem and I cannot quit because the, um, the HomePod and this and Apple TV and everything just works magically together. But god damn, that S24 had some nice features. Like one of my favorite ones, like I don't care about the camera, Android is shit. But one of my favorite things, as someone who lived in Poland for five years and learned five words, and one, those five words combine a sentence and the sen sentence is on the phone, someone speaks Polish, and you're like, sorry, I don't speak Polish. So jokes aside, I can understand a bunch of Polish. I cannot reply back. So always, like when I'm talking on the phone with someone, like they would laugh or they would be like, ah, ha, ha, and I'm like, well, I'm paying your restaurant for a freaking order. So don't laugh, you witch. Who laughs at someone trying to order, you know, Thai food in, in Polish? Try ordering Thai food in Polish. See what you do. Polish person, probably she can, but whatever. Uh, the S24 has a feature where you can do phone calls and the AI, like when the person says something, the AI will say it back in English, and then you say something in English, and the AI will tell it to the person in Polish. I need that in my life, but you know, I was thinking about it, and today I was in a, in a mall, and I was looking at Galaxy phones, and I'm like, I would also need Galaxy Buds, and I would need a Galaxy Watch, and fuck all of that, because I've been, a couple of years ago, I was like, let me pause iPhone and just go to Galaxy Land, and I tried one run with that Samsung stupid watch, and it died Something happened in the middle of the run. The phone ran out of battery in the middle of the day. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm not messing with Android, but I can't wait until comes this comes to Apple, if it does ever. So then I started just watching a random show, Good Omens on Amazon Prime, and I was like, get up, you're not going to finish the show. So I got up around <laughs> 9 o'clock, like a freaking idiot. And yeah, there was one more thing that I wanted to mention here. Funny demon eyes baby camera. Like my, like 
we, we the, the baby sleeps next to us, but still it's easier um, to just watch her on the camera. So we have the uh, my wife's phone on a magnetic stand and we just, you know, we can just glance and see what's going on without going over her. Because if you go over her, she will notice you. And if she's half woken up and she notices you, she starts laughing. And she's like, oh, oh let's start a day. It's 3 a.m. Let's party. Let's do push-ups. Right? So you don't want to, you don't want her to notice you that you're breathing, you're holding your breath and you look at the camera. And the funny thing is the camera at night switches to night vision and you like, sometimes it's going to send a notification. Cuboy AI uh, took those cute snaps of your baby. Look to see them and you click and it's just like a bit like an inverted black and white picture and the baby has like demon eyes and it's almost like she's going to be like, Oh, we're about to in your sleep. Like, oh, you're like, this is, these are not cute photos. Like, it's cute when you see the camera during the day, but at night, it's like, nope, nope, nightmare fuel. So I see her at night, and I'm laughing, you know, because of the sounds she makes, and then I look at the camera, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's scary. But, yeah, morning time. So what was I doing in the morning? I started walking. It was really hard to start the treadmill today. I don't know. I thought, if everything is ready here, and if I have my shoes, and yada, 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 sometimes it's just hard. I don't know how I keep going. Like, this is day... I don't freaking know. I've been walking a lot. Let's just give myself a pat on the back for that one. I've been walking a lot here. Like 10K, 10K, 10K. Like this is almost full second week of me doing 10K steps. And I think previously I was even doing it. I was just not writing it here. And I finally saw 95 kilos. So round of applause for your boy. He's losing weight. Don't compliment me until I get to 85. I think 85 is going to be too low. But I'm happy that I got to 95. That was a huge kilo and something jumped from yesterday. So I'm kind of concerned now about, uh, you know, that I'm going to lose a lot of muscle if I don't slow this weight loss. And I never thought I'd get to a place where I would want to slow down a weight loss. Like, it's 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 weird. Usually, you want to get there faster. But it seems like I'm doing a lot of things right. So, let's see. I don't want to jinx it. So far, so good. It was hard to start walking on the treadmill. But w once you started, you get into some problem. Um, I was writing a script. I wrote a script because here's how my brain works. If I do something manually for three times, the fourth time I'm like, nah, I got to make an app. And sometimes if I make a script and the script turns into an app, I share it on Twitter. People are like, I would like this in terms of a product. And then you start making money out of it. People think it's more complex than that. Like they come up with master plans or whatever. Just find something that's a pain in your ass and you can easily make it a product out there. And probably there's going to be at least three people like you who have that problem. Now, can you live all three people? You can, but you get my fucking point. Um, so I wrote a script. That basically, when I finish this recording right now, I just convert it to MP3, uh, from MP4 to MP3, basically. Uh, I upload it to Adobe Enhance, and after I download it from Adobe Enhance, the hardest part for me is I just want to drag it into my podcast app and just be done with my day. But I got to go into Adobe Premiere and drag the intro and mix it with the intro. It's like every day is going to be the same, intro music and podcast. So I wrote this script, and by that, I mean Chad GPT wrote this script for me. I had the idea, so I still technically wrote the script. You just drag an MP3 file and it's going to merge it after four seconds of the intro. It's just going to start the, the podcast and it outputs an MP3 file. So this is going to save me a lot of time daily because I can just run the script, upload the podcast, and I'm, I'm done with it. So I started messing with that. I started messing. I wanted to write a video script for doing the same thing, but for the videos, just not to use Adobe Premiere, but to use it with script. But it was too complex, so I built on that. And I was in the middle of my walk, like 30, 35 minutes in, started playing this Connor Price guy. And some songs, man, they have such a beat. They're so catchy. There's this song called Violet. Like, the beat was nasty. And when it started, like, I immediately cranked up the thread treadmill. And I'm like, oh, this goes about five, six? So I go six, six and a half, seven. I'm like, okay, I need to run. And I haven't ran for a while. So suddenly, I found myself, I stopped my workout. I started running workout. And for five minutes, like, I just went from slow, 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 running into, like, a super sprint. And then I stopped for a while. I'm like, whoa, this happened. You'll be like, why are you so surprised? Why are you not running? So I was actually on... on pretty how to call it i loved running man like running was my everything when i was losing weight like i got into running monday wednesday friday rain or shine rain or shine like i would just walk no matter freaking what so i ran probably from years from the college days since i started but in the recent years like 2017 18 19 more actively and suddenly in the middle of a run like something happens like a jolt of electricity in my hip in my leg and since then i had these leg issues i don't know what happened i have no idea i still to this day I have no idea is it from too much sitting? Did I pull something? Was it something to do with the run? And I miss it like hell, man. Like it, it was a crucial component of my life, just going outside, running, uh, clearing your head. And it's not comparable to just being on a treadmill, okay? Just being on a treadmill is you're at home, you're coding, whatever. Just going outside, especially when I lived in the Netherlands and I didn't, li didn't know the city that much. Like if you just take a different turn and there's, oh, here's a river, here's a park, here's a thing. It felt like an adventure and I started going on longer and longer and longer runs and I freaking enjoyed it until this freaking thing happened. So since then, I've been working with physical therapists and yada, 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 and I've been on a couple of short runs. They're like 
you cannot push your body. You gotta walk for one minute and run for one minute. But I still haven't been on a run run when I go out for 25 minutes. So today I did it five and I started feeling something in my leg. I'm like, push it. I just really enjoy it. And then at the end of the run, another song came came on. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to do five more. So I did 10 minutes in total of running. And the last one was actually sprinting. And when I was walking today, I felt some something happening in the hip. But I think if I continue this everyday walking and in, in, insert a little bit of running, maybe it's going to be fine. I hope that it's going to be fine. Um, we're going to see. So at some point in the Netherlands, I think where I fucked up a lot, when I was into running, I was always doing a 5K, 5K. Maybe I did a 6K, but always going for a 5K. And one day I just decided, what will happen? Let's do a 10K. What can go wrong? Huh? So I did a 10K. It was fine. And then the day after that, maybe I took a day of a break and I'm like, let's do a half marathon. What can go wrong, right? A lot of things went wrong. I couldn't walk for the next week. So I, I didn't do the like half marathon, just completely running. Like a, probably after 10, 15 kilometers, I took, a, uh, I took a walking break. And I'm not sure if I ever stopped. Maybe halfway there when I reached a place, like I stopped for a while um, and then I, 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 I ran back. But I know that I did 21 kilometers in to total. It, it didn't feel like running actually half a marathon, but the, the, the miles, the kilometers were the kilometers of a half marathon. And after that, I couldn't walk. And I think that I screwed up something in my leg then. I, I, I couldn't walk properly and I felt this pain. So maybe, you know, it just reactivated after a couple of years. I don't freaking know. The one thing that kept me running, man, through that half marathon is Eminem. I still think that now, I'd, like, no one has long longevity like Eminem. I'm going to give you a spicy opinion here that uh, I'm so tired of the fucking opinion that Tupac and Biggie were the best and whatever. Did they survive for 30, 50 fucking years? I know they're dead and something happened, like they shot them or whatever. But if they were alive, like we have these examples, we have Jay-Z, we have Nas, we have a bunch of these people from that era who are still alive. Nobody does it like Eminem. He's number nine on freaking Spotify. So he survived the cassette, tape, vinyl, Spotify, all the fucking eras, and he's still number nine. So there is something magical in that fucking guy. Like, he made me fall in love with rap. He actually made me, like, when I listen to rock songs right now, because I was listening to rock back in the day, they're lame. What are, what are these lyrics? And oh, I miss you like the sunshine. Shut the fuck up, dude. Like, when you, when you listen to rap, like, there's this depth of you listening to a story and the lyrics and double, triple, and tundras, and like clever rhyme schemes and whatever. Like there's so much depth to it that you want to re-listen and you open the lyrics. And you listen to freaking White Snake. The guy's been complaining about his ex for four fucking albums. So, you know, I still enjoy rock music. But Eminem made me fall in love with rap. And that motherfucker, he has some yelling songs and people are memeing like, oh, Eminem is yelling. Just listen to the couple of last albums. I think three last albums, Kamikaze and Music to be Murdered by One and Two. If you miss the old Eminem, I think this is even better than the old Eminem. Like, he had a couple of albums in between, like Revival, which weren't that good. But, man, this guy can make you run. That was my point. When this guy yells, when this guy, you know, gives you that energy, when some song came came up during that run, like, immediately it gives you, like, a nitro boost. So, fucking love the guy. Um, yeah, finished that. Did sauna for 15 minutes, infrared sauna today, and read a chapter for, like, 15 minutes of the Hail Mary book. And then I did the cold shower again. And I, as you can see, my nose is stuffed and I feel like I'm coughing today and shit. So I guess there is a side effect to cold showers. You're going to get cold eventually. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I don't like that I have a stuffy nose. And, and if I start getting colds, I'm going to go back to hot showers. Even though I enjoy the power that this thing gives you. You know, it makes you yell a little bit. Yell, like a little bit scream, like, <laughs> like that lady in, in fucking Tom and Jerry when she would see the mouse. Like, it's something like that. It's not a primal scream. You're like, oh, I'm so strong, you know, but it still still makes me feel amazing. Um, all right, what next? Dentist. Then I was like, I had so much time. It was 1245, bro. And I had time and I was looking at the clock. I was aware I have 50 million things in my house that tell me like the Alexa will tell me the Google will tell me the watch will tell me my phone will ping me and I'm like, I have time. I have time. I was fucking late. I was driving like a madman, which is not a good idea. I was driving 110 for a place that's like 70. Like the, the limit is 70 kilometers per hour and I was driving like 110. And just to save a minute, like the math doesn't add up. You're not going to save anything. And the weather is cold outside. The roads are icy. I could have done something stupid. And they called me and they're like, you're late again. And I'm like, I know that's our deal. You know, you make shitty fucking bridges for a few months. I have to walk like I'm fucking 93. I'm late for a couple of minutes. Deal with it. But I don't like it that, that I'm late. And at every stop, when I would stop for the stoplight, I was making a series shortcut because here's a life hack. You're wasting time at the dentist. <laughs> you're not wasting time, but... Um, I don't want to be one of those people who preach you, oh, be more productive, bro. When you sleep, you got to do push-ups, whatever. 
So um, I started last couple of times, I started listening to podcasts at the dentist. So I'll just ask her, is it fine if I listen? She's like, she's fine. Immediately, like what pisses me off about people? As soon as she says it's fine, she asks you a question. Like she see me, like intentionally I would twist my phone and I would press the play button, you know, to be like, to indicate I'm listening now. You get it? And she's like, yeah, I get it. And then she'll ask me something and I have to pause and I'm like, what? And then I have to turn it off noise canceling. I'm like, what? And it's something basic. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to go back to this. And then it goes on and you're no fucking dentist. Like they'll fill up your mouth with foam and a scalpel and three fucking devices. And they'll be like, how is cool, sweetie? And you're like, oh, yes, yes, yes. I think they teach you that at dentist school. And lesson number two, you're going to make them uncomfortable. If they cannot talk, you got to make them talk. Are they treating them for, uh, teaching them for hostage situations? Or like, I don't fucking know. But anyway, what was I saying? Yeah. One thing that bugged me about the podcast is that sometimes they have questions and sometimes they see something. Usually it's open your mouth, close your mouth or whatever. Or sometimes they'll be like, is this, like they have three questions. Dude, they should put buttons, press the thing and it displays. Like I was thinking about this. My brain goes that far sometimes. And I'm like, hmm. What if I bring a device to the dentist? I'm not kidding. I was thinking about this. There's like a screen, like a little tiny thing. And if she needs to ask me something, she just press it and I'll see the thing. And I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. They're going to kick you out of there and you, your teeth are going to rot. They're, they're going to ban you from every dentist office. This guy's bringing fucking screens and buttons. Ban him. So yeah, that didn't work out. But one thing that bugs me is this stupid fucking iPhone. You can increase the volume. You can decrease the volume, but you cannot stop. You cannot stop the podcast. And I'm missing a lot of things. Like she'll start talking. I go vol volume down, volume down, volume down. Blah, blah, blah. And then she'll, I'll forget for a while and I increase the volume. And suddenly they're talking about polar bears. And I'm like, I thought this, this podcast was about startup money, MRR, whatever. Why are you talking about polar? And it was annoying. So today while I was driving, I got this idea. What if I turn this button into like dentist mode? So only where I'm at the dentist, it runs this Siri shortcut for pausing and playing the podcast. So I did that, and the idiotic fucking Apple, like what I hate about this company, is they have unnecessary restrictions, dude. Like when the phone is locked, like when the lock screen is, is not, like, this doesn't even have lock, it's like fucking always on display. The action button doesn't work. So we start with a procedure, she asks me something, I hold the action button, I'm like, God fucking damn it, this fucking company. So you couldn't turn it on and off. And then I realized, what if I press the power button and then the action button, and then it worked. But why Apple? I want to be a fly on a wall during those meetings to be like, oh, we got to add this. There's, it's not even Tim Cook. It's a fucking asshole with a goatee. I can guarantee you there's some asshole with a goatee in Apple who's like, um, well, actually, we cannot allow the user to do that. You know, that would be too much freedom. Fucker. So anyway, that worked. I was listening to a podcast. It, it feels like, you know, while she's drilling in your head, you know, when you feel that... It feels a little, at least you're getting distracted and listening to something else. So, yeah, I don't like that. I was driving like a madman and I don't like that, you know, during every stoplight I was making a series shortcut. It's, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Stupid idea. Parking ticket. After I went out of there, I see something flailing on my fucking car dashboard and I got my first parking ticket ever in life. Ever. So I called this dentist place and I'm like, what the fuck? I thought you guys have free parking. And they're like, the parking here has been paid for like a lot of fucking years. And I'm like, oh, God damn it. Because with an electric car, um, you basically get free parking everywhere in the city. So um, I'm used to not paying parking ev everywhere. And sometimes there's a private parking and you got to pay for that. And I didn't know. So I guess I was lucky the last 97 times I went for this one freaking tooth. Like everyone's laughing at me and my family. They're like, bro, we fixed like half of our mouth with the amount of times you went to this dentist and the amount of money you paid to this dentist. But I'm like, ah, at least I'm getting a half ass job done. <laughs> it hurts. So I got a parking ticket now, I got to pay it, and it is what it is. So after the dentist, I know I completely skipped from reviewing Benji. We were supposed to review my habits and everything, but fuck it, we're going to go back to that at some point. Um, I felt like going to the mall. I still have this feeling from a kid, from being a kid, you know, after you finish with a doctor, they'll, they'll take you somewhere. They'll buy you a toy. They'll buy you a kinder surprise or whatever. So I felt like, you know what? I deserve this because you know what? I don't give a fuck about my work. Dude, I don't know what's happening with me. Like, I have the course, I have emails, I have shit ton of things to do. And I didn't think of after, there was no anesthesia today. There was no like fucking, um, there was no pain. There was no reason to fucking bail on the day. I could have came back and just worked for a couple of hours, three, four hours. It doesn't matter. I would have been more productive. Your boy decided, let's frolic and go to the freaking mall. So I went to the mall and I bought myself toys. I'm collecting this Pop Funko, so I got Nebula as a Pop Funko. I don't have shelf space anymore, but I'll keep collecting them. And I saw this. This wasn't even in, in, it was in a regular supermarket. I see this, I get this, I'm a Marvel fan, I have millions of them. 
Like these figurines, I'm still collecting them, I'm an idiot. It is what it is. It felt like being a kid and after a dentist, they buy you a toy. I'm still doing that. Like, I guess don't grow up, have fun with your life, whatever. The mall is kind of freaking depressing, dude. Like, it's, I don't know, when I go there, just, you, I don't think we look at the people enough. Like, when you look at the people, when you focus, you're like, Jesus Christ, what am I doing here? Like, actually, I hate shopping. Like, I hate, 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 hate shopping. I was supposed to buy protein. I remember that was the re real reason I wait, went to the mall because I was so tired of showing those, these red habits, right? Like, well, I didn't do this. I didn't do my protein. I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to wait for my protein to arrive. I'm going to go and buy some shitty ass protein brand. And the store was closed. And while the store was closed, they had a B-Ride back sign. I just went and bought myself the stupid toys. I went shopping for groceries. I went shopping for clothes, which I absolutely hate. Every time I enter a clothes store, I walk in and I'm like, huh, that's a nice shirt. I drop it and I leave and I don't visit it for the next two months. I keep shopping. There should be a service which you give their sizes to. You're like, my pants are this size. My jacket is this size. My, my mm, blouses, whatever, are this size. And they just send you a packet of clothes randomly. I'm pretty sure that exists in the USA. I need it for Europe. I don't want to bother with clothes. It's so freaking annoying. And then, more annoying thing, I decided, hmm, I want to eat healthier, so I'm going to go grab a couple of groceries. We're doing online shopping, but it's nice when you enter a supermarket. This is what, you know, everyone says. When we tell them we do online shopping, they're like, but sometimes you're going to get inspired. And these are the people who buy spaghetti, macaroni, a sauce, meat, and three other things. Which inspiration, dude? You're going to get the other brand of milk in Aldi? There's no freaking shopping inspiration. Shop online like a person. They knock on our door once per week. They deliver all the, all the groceries. Buy. It's the same store I went to today. So it doesn't matter if I get it in person. But I wanted to get inspired. And I wasn't. I just wasted a bunch of time. I bought the same shit that I could have bought online. And the worst part of grocery shopping is the self-checkout. Like, I don't know how they tricked us into this shit. I have no freaking idea. Like, they tricked us to do their job. And all of us are lining up like donkeys man like a bunch of donuts just lining up just groceries overflowing and waiting to be like oh yeah i'll do your job while the same cashiers who are doing the job they're staying in the corner smugly looking at you like <laughs> you cannot do that <laughs> you fucked up you know when it starts beeping beep, 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 and you're like what the fuck did i do wrong and she just unknowingly grabs the packet of chips she's like give me that and i'm like oh give you that how about that give you this fucking entire bag and you do your job instead of just sitting in the corner scolding me for not doing your freaking job. I don't know how they tricked us, but we were doing it like freaking donkeys. It's it, it's annoying. Like, I, I had bananas, you know, and I go to the thing, the tablet, which doesn't have English. It has, but it's buried somewhere in some weird setting. And I'm like, okay, the measure things. And it's like vegetable, fruits, bread, whatever. And I go, fruits. And then there's like seven fruits only. And you, the most exotic ones. There was a fruit that I've never seen before in my life. And I'm like, where the fucking bananas and apples? And it, that, you know, the thing starting, beep, beep, and the lady comes, she's like, you want to measure the bananas in Polish, whatever that's called in Polish. Just, uh, but, uh, banana something. And I'm like, yes, please. And she's like, well, you cannot do it here. You got to go to the fucking place. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere, sweetie. Like, if you want to go there and do your actual job and measure the freaking bananas, otherwise I'm going to be on a banana-less diet for a week. Okay, donut telling me to go somewhere to measure my bananas. And the good part of a shopping mall is I always get bubble tea. Now, I said that I don't eat sweets and I don't put a bunch of shit in my bubble tea. I don't put... Um, toppings and I don't put milk and I don't put like probably it's bad for you but give me a break you know you wouldn't consider bubble tea a sweet they put one of those tapioca on the bottom and there's green tea in it so technically I checked off my green tea habit for one day I don't know it's just a you know pleasure like one beautiful thing that that comes out of going to the freaking mall so I came back at home and I realized you know what I don't give a fuck about my work and that's a realization I had and I don't know why is it happening maybe I have some blockers maybe I have some issues but like you shouldn't treat work this way. Like so many unfinished projects, so many bugs that customers are reporting, so many freaking emails, so many things. And I just decided to take the day off. And if you ask me, what did you do in this day? I mean, at least I spent shit ton of time with my daughter. I wrote her a song. It made me cry. She was also crying, not because the song was emotional, because she cries. That's the only benefit that we spend a bunch of time. Ask me what else did I do with my day? I have no flipping idea. It was just a random wasted day. I didn't do much. I uploaded a previous podcast. I tweeted on Twitter. That was it. I wish I was the kind of person who takes a day off and then, I don't know, does something meaningful, watches a movie, goes out, does something interesting. It was basically a bunch of nothing and I kind of regret it. Like, I have this, I, I told you, the ex-employee that now I re-employed as a contractor and he's doing a bunch of things and I get emailed. He commented. He mentioned a thing. He mentioned you in a thing. I don't want to open it. <laughs> and then, like, he'll be working for a month and I'll get mad. Oh, why is he not reading my mind? Why did you do things this way? And this happened with every single contractor slash employee I had like I want to give them freedom 
I want to not be bothered. And then when it comes to review and stuff, I'm like, oh, I would have done this better. Oh, this should have been done this way. And it's a fucking cycle. I'm mad at people that they're not reading my mind. I'm an idiot. Let's look at the Benji thing. Jesus, I talked for 30 minutes. What the hell was I saying? Um, so let's go through this fast. Fasting. Get it? Fast fasting. Fasting is going great, as always. Weight, 94.3. We saw the, the, the five. Food, kicking ass. Everything is green. Super healthy food. Uh, today we got the Ninja Creamy, the ice cream maker. So uh, we're going to freeze. Like basically what you do is you freeze um, a tube of ice cream. You made like a... Uh, you make like a healthy protein variant, whatever, with no sugar. You put it in the freezer. And tomorrow you put it in this Ninja Creamy and it runs like the blade through the entire thing and makes it the texture like ice cream. That's the philosophy. I'm going to try it tomorrow and let you know. Basically, as an alternative to like no sweets, I'm just going to make homemade fruit, whatever, ice cream. What else? We want to see the habits. There's a bunch of tasks. Don't look at my tasks because I forgot to do a bunch of them. Some of them are glowing red. Doesn't do anything. The tasks are better today. Like I started doing planks. I'm still hanging on the bar. Uh, clean my face, moisturize, those are new, cold shower, gonna get a cold from the freaking cold showers, um, didn't do my coding, did the fasting, I ate lunch mindfully, I ate breakfast mindfully, the sun was shining on the table, I was chilling, it, like I was looking at my phone like a freaking addict, dude, even though there's nothing on my phone anymore, there's nothing I can scroll on my phone, like every bite of breakfast, and I just look at my phone like something is calling me, you know, and it's so freaking annoying, but I'll get there, I'll eat my meals mindfully without my phone or without my laptop or without YouTube. So the night routine, you know, we just skip all of it. So everything is failed by default. The anytime, as you can see, I crushed everything. So this would have been a golden section if I did my workout. But because today is not workout day, um, I'm skipping the workout. So it doesn't turn gold. It's pissing me off. It should have at least given me silver, but it didn't. No alcohol, no bread, no soda, no fast food. Sauna, shower, cold shower, no coffee, no sweets. Like I'm absolutely freaking crushing it. So no workout today except the 10K, Pomodoro's zero, <laughs> more like zero Doros, right? Nothing today, absolutely nothing. Let's see what else I have because I want to keep this around 30 minutes. So I guess no um, listener questions today. Well, I have a bunch of random shit here. I'm not sure if we should go through it or we should just, yeah, let's just leave this for the next one because I'm wondering when is it going to be this day? I have a I have a Notion document called Random Topics that is growing, is going, and growing. And I'm like, oh, today probably it won't be 30 minutes. I don't have much to talk about. And suddenly it's 30 minutes. So when I, I'll move this to Random Topics and we're going to get there. Final piece of the podcast is content. Like a lot of people might drop off here if they don't care about gaming, TV shows, movies, whatever. It's still an interesting segment to me. From games, this Cades game is growing on me. Um... Like, instead of using a blade, they switch to a sword. They make you feel a little bit like Cap, right? You can do this all day. So it's it's really interesting. I'm glad I can focus on one game at a time. Usually, I would be paralyzed by the amount of games I have. The The nice thing about this Switch, the Switch, about this um, Steam Deck, is when you unlock it, like, it starts, the, look, like, it starts the game. That's it. I play the game. So you don't wake it up for sleep and then click start and whatever. I think that's what contributes to paralysis analysis and you don't game. Like, I just unlock this and boom. I'm into I'm into the game. So that's why I can focus on one game. I got this um, case thingy, as you can see here on the camera. It's like rubbery, grippy case thing on all sides. It even has a little, um, it has a little kickstand. I don't know where would you prop this on. Like, I don't know what's the point of this. I can already see the texture is not that nice because it's kept greasy and everything. But this is really nice because you can actually grip this properly. And even though I grip it, the game is kicking my ass. But this is now my favorite gaming device. Like, I freaking love this. The company that makes all of these mods, like I put this on the buttons on the back, like these to be more lifted, and I put these things on the front, like these things, like the grippy things. It's called JSAUX, J-S-A-U-X. And I want to be on that meeting when they were supposed to name the company. And they should be like, hey, want to call ourselves, I don't know, alternative gaming accessories? And someone was like, sir, I have a suggestion. What is it? It's, oh, cool. Let's do it. You can never pronounce this. Hey, I got my mod from... So, definitely, they're sponsoring this video. Get your freaking Steam Deck mods from... Idiot. Uh, what else? Music. Penis by Lil Dicky is coming out tomorrow. And I'm genuinely not trolling. I'm excited for this album. He revealed the track list. It has 20 songs. I'm going to laugh my ass off. Definitely watch the show, Dave. It's freaking hilarious. Artist, again, Connor Price. I told you about Connor Price. Definitely listen to him. And final thing I'm adding is an app. So, I'm going to give you an app every day that I'm using... I'm probably going to run out of apps after 50 episodes, but there's an app that's crucial to my macOS workflow. It's called Yoink. That's Y-O-I-N-K. And basically, anytime you drag your file, uh, any file on your computer, it pops up a little drawer from the side, and you can just let it rest in the drawer before you drag it into another thing. 
So I'm just used to when viewing doesn't work sometimes, like I'm like, how do people work this way? Like you want to go from Finder and drag something into, I don't know, Twitter uploader or whatever. Like it's so much easier if you go in Finder and you just drag it into Yoink and then you go to the place where you want to drop it and from Yoink you drop it. It's absolutely irreplaceable. I love it. I would never use an OS like Windows or Linux if it, they don't have functionality like this one. And I guess that's it. There's a bunch of links in the description, Twitters, Discords, a bunch of other things. Thank you for the support. Leave a comment. Retweet if you see my tweet. Leave a comment here. Subscribe. Um, rate it on, I don't know, iTunes, Podcast, Spotify, whatever you're listening to this on, just leave a rating. I don't think it will do anything, but it would be nice just to see some ratings there. Or, because I'm not your mother, do whatever the freak you want. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.